So what we're talking about today, assignments, it's really, um, it's, it's what I like to think. So hopefully this isn't me putting the cart before the horse. I like to think this is actually the easiest tool inside of Brightspace to use. If you're someone that has already mastered quizzes and grades, I think you'll find assignments is like much more simple. Um, and what assignments is, is it's just an area inside of the course site for students to submit their work. And of course, there's lots of different classes, and so there's lots of different kinds of work. Um, a student can submit, you know, any type of file that they're able to attach. Um, you would want to specify, of course, what file you want, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but suffice to say, hopefully, by design, anything that you would collect in person, you will be able to collect in the assignment Dropbox. Um, I'd be very curious to encounter a user case where that wasn't. Um, wasn't a possibility because there's always a way. So let's just dive in. How to make an assignment. So when I say how to make an assignment, it's really like how to make an assignment Dropbox or an assignment folder where you are going to be collecting assignments. And to do that, you're just going to go to assignments and you're going to go to new assignment. Right off the bat, you want to give it a title that makes sense. So week one journal, for instance. And then down here, you can either type out your instructions, you can copy them from another document and paste them in here. Or if you have a document that already explains what everybody needs to do, you can go ahead and add it as an attachment, keeping in mind that I'm, I keep using the same document and it's like <laughs> causing trouble. So I'll put another PDF in there. Keeping in mind that students, um, the most accessible file format is going to be a PDF. And behind that is Microsoft Word. Anything beyond that, you might it might get a little tricky for them to actually pull up the document and vice versa. If you are going to be accepting documents from students, you'll want to make sure you specify what kind of document they need to upload. So say I, I have my stuff already in a document, my instructions, I would just put inside of the instructions something like, see attached instructions. Please upload your submission as a PDF or a doc or whatever it is, the file type that you're looking for. If it's a video file, you know, maybe it's an MP4. Um, or if it's an image, um, maybe you specify that you want either a PNG or a JPEG. Um, but I think it's important in those instructions to specify what it is exactly you want from them. So your instructions are like how to complete it. And right here, make sure you tell them how to submit it. And then, Scrolling on down, we do have the option, if you do group work, if you have group projects, you can create a group folder. So one, just one person from the group has to submit the group's work. Um, it does involve a kind of second tier of D2L Brightspace use. You have to create those groups. So that's why it's not um, showing up for me right here because I haven't made any groups. But if you are interested in creating groups for group work, both for assignments and maybe for discussions, for, for whatever, um, I would be happy to hang out afterward and help you set up your groups. Most of the time, I think you guys will be doing an individual assignment submission. Everybody turns in their own assignment, right? So I see something in chat real quick. Oh, <laughs> no problem, Bardo. Have a good day. Um, so in under submission type, you guys will probably stick with file submission. That's going to be the, the PDF. That's going to be the Word document, the photo, the file. The like file, they've made it somewhere else and they just have to give it to you. That's going to be file submission. You also have the option of a text submission. So. A text submission is going to be basically them, they will be provided with a text box to either paste text into 
or write something into. Um, so depending on the nature of your assignment, this may be easier if it's something very brief. Um, keeping in mind that most of our students are going to be mobile users. Um, well, not, I don't, I don't know about most, but like many, there's a good chunk of people that are going to be probably using their phones exclusively for spring term. So it might be easier to have that text submission box rather than requiring them to like write something with an app on their phone. So that's really, it's your prerogative, of course. You know your students. Um, so it's between those two options. If we were doing any kind of in-person stuff, you also have on-paper submission and observed in-person. These are like turn them in in-person options. So of course, we're gonna stick with these first two. And once you have that decided that submission type, you really have to stick with it, unfortunately. Um, if you change your mind and would like to switch from them submitting a file to submitting um, just text, you um, will have to make a new assignment. So down here, files allowed per submission, I say just err on the side of caution and just let, let them upload as much as they want. And then all submissions are kept. Again, err on the side of caution. We don't want to lose anything. You never know when, when someone will make a, a mistake. Category, you guys are welcome to create categories for your assignments to just organize the area a little bit, um, but it's not required. If you just have your assignments listed out, um, perhaps you put, you know, week one assignment or week two, and it's a, if it's a way that makes sense, it makes sense. So, um, Lindsay asked, if you select text submission, can users still attach document? Um, they would have to, no, they would have to copy and paste it in the text box. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. So really that text submission is just going to be, um, maybe a good option if you're running into a lot of mobile user students, or if it's something very brief that you just want them to maybe quickly reflect on something, um, that text submission can be really handy. So again, you can organize your assignments by categories, or you can just skip that. You'll want to say score out of. Um, especially if you're going to be linking it to the gradebook. Um, the gradebook is a whole thing unto itself. You guys are not required to use it, but I'm thinking quite a few of you probably will. And much like you would, um, if you are someone that has used, used the um, gradebook already or, you know, you attached discussions to the gradebook, attached a quiz to the gradebook and had it feed into the gradebook automatically, this is a, probably a familiar process for you. But even if you're not, make sure you put that score out of how much is this thing worth. And if you are a gradebook user, you would just attach it to your gradebook item right here. So I'm not going to go into grades because it's like a whole thing. <laughs> um, but we do have grades workshops coming up if you're interested in using the gradebook tool inside of D2L. But for now, just make sure you have that score out of. Um, I'll put a score here, and then it gives you um, the option here. This is what they would see. It's pretty, you know, pretty straightforward. You have the option, if you would like, of creating rubrics inside of D2L so students know exactly how they're going to be scored. Um, the rubric tool is also, like, pretty involved, but it can be really worth it if you have assignments that you find yourself providing kind of like very generic feedback over and over and over and over and over telling people why they got the grade they got. The rubrics tool might be, might be kind of like the next level for you to explore if you have time. Um, maybe not for spring, but maybe in the future. So let me just double check my chat here. So what is a rubric? Um, a rubric is going to be um, a space that explains exactly the criteria for which a student will be graded for that particular assignment. For instance, say I want them to write, you know, a standard like five paragraph essay. Maybe my criteria is voice and tense and citations. 
Um, and I would basically create a rubric that defines those criteria. And it says like how much each of those criteria is worth in the overall grade. Um, and again, I don't wanna dive too deep into the rubric. Um, I'm not even really gonna go show you how to make it. If you're interested in making a rubric, I would love to help you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but for now, I wanna make sure everybody knows about um, assignments. And Amy asked about, so the category is just internal for the assignments. This category does not talk to the gradebook category. This is just a way of organizing your assignments in this area. So let me just, um, do I have any? Let me just make one and show you. You could say, you know, week one. And then on the page back, I'll show you what it looks like. So after you go past rubric, you'll see some other things. We do not use the e-portfolio, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, the scoring rubric is in reference to a rubric if you've made one. Um, one thing, though, that you might want to explore is the annotation tool. I'll show you that in a minute. But for now, just keep this checked. You don't have to use it if it's checked. Um, but just keep it checked in case you want to use it. So now I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to double check. Have I filled in what I need to fill in? Da 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 da. Cool. For now, I'm just going to save. And I'm gonna move over to the restrictions tab. The restrictions tab is where you're gonna find that master switch to hide from users. Both the quizzes and assignments default to be hidden until you unhide them. So you might, you know, if you miss this, students won't be able to see it. You'll probably get some emails. <laughs> um, so I think that when you're making the assignment, just um, select to unhide it. And if you want to wait for it to be visible, you can always add a start date. So availability, if you guys have used the other tools, availability really corresponds with visibility. Availability is like, when can this student see this thing? They can see it between the 25th of March at 518 to the 2nd of April at 1218. After that, it like literally disappears from their list and they can no longer access it. So you might consider adding a start date um, and leaving the end date blank because um, otherwise, you know, you might have people needing to submit late work and you'll just have to go in and change the end date. Um, because if you add a due date, if you have a start date and then you add a due date, it will flag people as having submitted something late. And so you can use your own judgment on how to like mark them if they've turned it in late. It will, it will provide like a flag that this person submitted late. So the final thing here, release conditions. Um, again, that's like a more advanced Brightspace thing. Um, but release conditions are basically you creating if then scenarios with your stuff. So for instance, you might have a syllabus quiz that you want, want to require students to take. And if they don't take it, they don't get to access anything else in the course. So that would be a release condition. You would have to create the if the student has, has completed the syllabus quiz, then they can see this thing. Um, so that's what the release conditions are. Um, they, can, they can become cumbersome, but if you're interested in using them, um, I think that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation for sure. And then finally, we have add users to special access. Um, Wendy, yes, it is. It's a, it tells you when they submitted it. Um, so the add users to special access, if anybody has any accommodations um, in assignments, um, I'd be curious to see what that looks like, but perhaps they just need longer. They have a really good reason and they just needed longer to complete something. Um, if you have that end date, or if you have that due date, and you wanna extend their due date, you can add them to special access, giving them like an additional window to finish. And so when you pull this up, you can define what exactly their special access is. So everybody else has a due date of the second, maybe you let this person go until Monday the sixth. And then, it'll show you 
under the users, all of your students. And of course, this class is empty, but you would just select next to your student's name, save. And then on the back in the restrictions tab, it says that Casey Twining has a special due date, right? And if I need to edit that and change it, I just go to the pencil. Or if I made a mistake, I can just remove it. The final tab is really easy to explain because we don't use it. <laughs> There's a really great um, thing inside of D2L that we're looking at adopting that aligns um, you know, ass assessment objectives with course objectives, with program objectives, with degree objectives, and like aligning all of those things. And so that's what this tab is but we don't use it yet. So for now, after you've gone through the properties and restrictions, you can save and close. And so let me show you the categories. This is what it looks like when I use a category. So if you want to organize your assignments this way, that's great. It's only for the assignments tool. Um, let's see here. So let's take a look at what it looks like after a student has, um, turns something in. Let me very quickly, I have to pretend to be a student and I'm gonna submit some work. So bear with me just one moment. Let me share my screen. I'm gonna go in as, first I'll go in as Alvin. So you can see me impersonating a student. Um, that is strictly an admin privilege for what it's worth. So I'm Alvin. I have an assignment due, I need to submit it. I see my assignment one. This one is a text submission. So I just type here. And so I can't attach anything, but I can type something in here. And then I submit. And then I click done. And then I go to my next one my week one journal. I can see my instructions up here are to see attached. Please upload your submission. Great, I see my start date and my due date. I would look at these, this to um, figure out what I needed to, to submit. And then I would click add a file, find a good document here. Oh sure, disclosure statement it is. And then if I want to leave a comment for my instructor, I can. I had fun writing this. Thanks. <laughs> Hopefully you guys get some nice comments like that sometimes. Um, as a student though, you'll notice that I also have the option to record audio or record video right here. And that could be my submission. If you want them to, if, you know, there's a lot to be said for kind of the, the distance of distance learning. So it's, it's one way to maybe shake things up, having them record some audio or record video instead of typing text. Um, my, my bet is most of you will probably go with text and with files. So here I am, I'm the student, I submit it. And I'm done. Um, Lindsay, yes they do. Let me show you that again. Um, they can insert stuff. They have the same toolbar. So they don't have that insert stuff from computer, as you notice, so it's like they can't add a file. But if they've got a, they made a video, they put it on YouTube, they could put it on here, or you know something like that. If it's a link to their website that they had to make for class or something. Um, yeah, they can insert stuff. Good question. Okay, now I am a student. I've submitted all my stuff. Let's go back into the teacher view. And so I'm the teacher and I can see I have a new submission here and here that I haven't reviewed yet. So I can wait for these to pile up, of course, and then do them all at once. By clicking that number, it opens up my evaluation screen automatically. And let's see, 
This was just a text submission. So it's probably a pretty straightforward grading. Over here, I can give them a score. And I can give some feedback. In the feedback, you can also provide audio feedback or video feedback, or of course, attach a file. Um, again, it's like um, the distance can feel like pretty far sometimes. So if you guys choose to use these, it's I think a really great tool um, to make up for some of that lost je ne sais quoi, that, that, um, that touch, right? That familiarity, getting to know your instructor, the relationship that forms, right? That can be a way to really um, uh, help with the distance. Um, you can also, of course, attach, you can insert stuff here as well. Um, or if you like download their assignment and then, you know, have put a bunch of marks on it, you can upload it as well. If you want to go classic, if you want to print off their paper and like write it out, um, you would just take a picture and then upload the file, for instance. And once I'm done grading, I've given him a grade, I've given him feedback. Um, I'll give some sample feedback here. Let's publish. And if I'm not ready to publish, if I'm just like, oops, I'm not ready for them to see that, I click retract. And if I wanna wait to publish everybody's at once, I can just save it as draft for now. And then um, if I had more users um, submitting things, I could just scroll right through to have like, you know, my session of grading papers. And now let's look at the file. So this one, if they submit a file, there's this pretty cool tool, the annotations tool that you can use built right into the file. Okay, so you can see this bar appears. When I click on the link for their file, it gives me a preview and this, this bar, this toolbar with some annotation stuff appears. So say I really think this is important or I want to comment Please use proper citation. Or if I want to make like, there's the option, the text box, it's like not quite. So actually, oh yeah, you're, I think you're better off using the comments because the text box, it looks like it might be um, more like you can insert these, these figures. Um, so you can leave comments and then the comment is just sitting there waiting for them. But you can highlight stuff, you can circle stuff. Um, it's a really great way to add some of those interactions. And, you know, it's helpful for providing feedback, of course. So I have like marked up their, their, their file and I'm like, all done. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I give them a score. If I had a rubric, I could grade with the rubric because the rubric is actually an interactive tool where you like select boxes for their level. And then I could provide some feedback again with video or audio. I could upload a file or I could just type in here. And again, I can save draft and publish later or I can publish right now. This one I'm just gonna publish right now. And I can go user by user once again. And now, so I have this one back here that I, maybe this one I chose to save everybody's as a draft because I want to publish them all at the same time. I just go to view submissions. And here's where you can see submission date. Um, and in the last screen, you could as well. I'm sorry, I forgot to show you that because we talked about it marking when they turn it in. Um, but when I'm ready to publish this, I'm just going to select all and then publish feedback. And then it will become visible for them. Let me double check chat here. So Wendy asked, um, oh no, sorry. So Jen asked, where would the draft appear so I could go back to it later? Um, I believe you're talking about um, when you're grading, selecting save draft instead of publish. It's just saved 
it's like saved as information for you waiting to be published. So I can't say like where, um, oh, I, okay. So I think I know what you mean. If you need to like go back into someone's assignment and maybe add something or change their grade or something, um, you just go back in. So let me see here. Can I unpublish from here? Unpublish? Um, let me retract and then you can go back in and edit from this page. Draft saved. So just to back up, because that might have been confusing. This one, oops. This assignment, I have my feedback saved as a draft. I'm going to go into view submissions. I'm going to see all of my students have this draft saved. And if there's a particular student, I just go in and I can change whatever I need to add some feedback, remove some feedback. Um, and let's see here. Where does it show me when they submitted it? It's definitely visible in that submissions page. So if you want to just go there to grade things, you can. When we first entered this area together, I clicked on the number because I had a new here. But if you want to just go this way, view submissions every time, there's an evaluate. When this isn't published, it says evaluate. And then you would just, it's the same view where you just go person by person, you add feedback. Yada, yada, let me double check here. So, okay, so where would the draft of peer? We answered that. If I had a Word doc rubric, could you cut and paste? Yeah, Wendy, if you are up for making a rubric in D2L, um, I can send you some information. Um, if you want to put your email in chat, I can send you some like tutorials. And then from there, we could like maybe work one-on-one -on -one with making your rubrics. But yeah, you can copy and paste. It's like um, you can't copy and paste everything at once, unfortunately. It's like piece by piece. Um, Lindsay asked, if you hadn't done anything with the grade book, would the score just um, be in the valuation section and not transfer? Exactly. So Lindsay, if you don't use the grade book, they can still, the student can still go to assignments. Let's pose as Alan or Alvin so we can see what the student sees after they've been scored. If they don't use the grade book, they can go to assignments and they see their score here. And they also see that they have feedback and they can look at their submission or they can look at the assignment directions. So all of that is inside of the assignments area, yeah. Um, let's see, Luke Garda, is it required to score is contract grading with no numerical value? Um, Luke Garda, if you're not gonna use the grade book, um, you can score however you'd like. Um, and let me back up because I think you can do that within assignments. It's just that if you don't have, if you don't have that score filled in, for the assignment info, let's see here. You just can't provide a score later. So if you wanna skip the score altogether, you can. Um, it's just in that evaluation page, there won't be anywhere for you to score. But let me see. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna, um, or I'm wondering, actually, with the student preview, if you did want to do, oh, um, yep. Unfortunately, yeah, you would just skip scoring then. You would just, like, um, you know, provide feedback and keep your, however you're grading them, separate from, from D2L. But you can still use the, the feedback and you can still use the annotations tool. Yeah. Um, so that's mostly it with assignments. One last thing I'm going to show you, just make sure everybody knows how to do it. After you make your assignments, you can link them inside of content, inside of the module that they're pertaining to. So like, say I have a week one module and I want the student to be able to see everything they have to do for week one inside of this module. 
I would go inside of this module, click existing activities, assignments, and then assignment one, and it shows up right here. Yeah, Amy's, Amy mentioned that she, she uses the grade book in D2L. And yeah, if, you are, um, if you're already using the grade book, this will be, I think, a, a much easier transition for you um, because it'll just have even more hooked in to automatically figure out things for you instead of you maybe working offline to, to figure things out. I hope that's good news that nobody has any questions. Um, hopefully that's because I was right and you find assignments to be like pretty intuitive. Um, yeah, I think it's one of the easier tools to use. So, so yeah, anything that they would submit in person, they can submit online. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. If nobody has any other questions, if there's anybody that wants to hang out and like, if you're curious about something and you want to just like work through it together, I've got, I've got time. Um, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.